So in this video, I'm going to talk about a couple of tips and tricks for Delta V rings of Saturn. I'm not going to talk about basic controls or anything that's covered within the tutorial as you start the game. And I'm also not going to spoil anything that is later into the game in terms of encounters that you can get aside from the standard ones that you're going to see really early on. I'm more going to talk about a couple of things that may not be immediately obvious, but it is useful to know in the early game. And it's definitely going to ease things into Delta V Fury a little bit as you're starting out. So the first point is to keep an eye on the mineral prices. So when you get to the base for the first time, just go and have a look at what the price per ton is. Now these prices do fluctuate, but it fluctuates within a certain range. And you're immediately going to see that there are certain minerals that are more valuable than other ones. And these are the minerals that you want to keep an eye out for when you're busy doing mining. And the reason this is so important is because usually, especially when you're using the mass driver, you're shooting things apart, minerals are gonna fly into different directions, and you need to have some sense of what's worth going after and what isn't, because in some cases you are gonna to have to make a decision. And of course, you're also, every time that you are chasing a mineral at a high rate of speed, you are risking damaging your ship or colliding with something in that process. So then when you get to the base for the first time, after you've checked the mineral prices, the first upgrade you're going to want to buy is the cargo bay upgrade, which is available right at the start of the game at 2000. And since you're starting out with 20,000, it really is a no brainer to buy the upgrade with the baffles. The reason this is so useful is because the standard cargo bay doesn't actually prevent any of the minerals that you've already mined on a given run from exiting the cargo bay again. So what ends up happening is if you've collected a couple of minerals and you're chasing a particular one, you're opening the cargo bay door and for whatever reason, maybe you're about to collide with an asteroid, you have to decelerate. That is going to cause most of the minerals that you've mined or maybe even all of the minerals that you've mined to basically shoot out of the open cargo bay. So having the baffles installed just prevents that from happening. All the minerals gets trapped behind that barrier. So it's a really useful thing to have. As I said, it's very cheap. So just get it right at the beginning of the game. So next up, I want to talk about hiring relevant crew members. And the one crew member that I like to get right at the beginning of the game is the geologist. So I think the geologist is usually a little bit more on the expensive side compared to some of the other crew members, like the mechanic that you can hire. But it's a very useful crew member because you can, or the geologist will basically allow you to see estimated prices of the minerals that are floating around in space and again that helps you to just prioritize to see what you should be going after it's of course not 100 percent accurate that depends on how good the geologist is that you have hired but at least as i said it allows you to get some directional view of how much each of these minerals are potentially going to be worth and, and just prioritizing based on that the other crew member that you're probably going to want to hire is a mechanic uh, again, you're going to be doing a lot of repairs throughout the game, so it is useful to have one. They're not very expensive to hire at the beginning of the game. And if you want to go for a crew member with a lower salary, you may as well do that. At the beginning of the game, you don't have so much money and they will gain experience over time anyway. So it is better to start off with somebody that isn't too expensive. What you've got to keep in mind is that when you are doing repairs, this is going to take time and this is going to put you closer to the end of the month. And once you get to the end of the month for a given person, that will basically be their payday. So uh, if you're hiring everybody at the same time, it means that you're going to have to pay everyone. So just do keep that in mind. Now, next up, I want to talk about the beacon upgrade. And the reason this is useful is because you probably... If you want to be deeper into the rings to do your mining runs, there are basically three ways of doing this. So the first one is to just drop yourself on the outer ring and to fly deeper into the uh, rings of Saturn. And that's the default way, but you're probably not going to want to do that every time. Now, the second method is to just click deeper into the rings when you are doing the selection of where you want to be inserted but that gets really expensive really fast so if you're not getting dropped into or just outside the rings of saturn that is going to be immediately expensive and it only really makes sense to do that occasionally and to do it later on in the game when you have more funds available so the third option is to use the beacon or at least these are the three options that i'm aware of it could be that there are even more but basically what the beacon does is so once you have this installed you can fly to wherever you want to be when you start 
about the next run or when you go into the next run you drop the beacon and then once you get inserted on the next run you can just set a waypoint for that beacon and go there instantly just keep in mind that the beacon is a little bit heavy and it does make your ship lopsided so if you're flying around with it and you do need to quickly make an evasive maneuver or you get attacked by someone or you want to start mining somewhere I would advise that you do drop it so that you don't have to deal with that extra weight. So the next important point is don't be afraid to experiment with the various upgrades. You can always get a full refund for upgrades for basically anything that you buy in the game. So aside from things like propellant which you use as you're flying around, the actual upgrades that you're doing has a fixed price and you get all of that back if you want to swap to something that's cheaper or that's more expensive. So even though the game doesn't always give you a clear explanation on exactly what everything does, I mean it does a fairly decent job and there are some simulations that you can look at, but there's no reason for you to not just put an upgrade onto your ship and fly out and see exactly how it works. So definitely do do that. The other thing that you also need to keep in mind is that in this game more expensive doesn't always mean better. Different upgrades have different uses, so that's the way you need to think about it. And if you're going to play in the way that you're just going to buy all of the most expensive stuff, you might end up with an unbalanced ship or a ship that doesn't do exactly what you want to do well. So you really have to think about what the impact of each upgrade is and how they all work together and basically build a purpose-built ship for what it is you want to do. So if you want to go out and salvage, you can buy certain upgrades to do that if you want to stick to mining there are certain upgrades that are good for that and various things related to power usage and heat and so on so just do keep that in mind as well now next up i want to talk about the reactor this is located on the back of your starting ship and if you're going to collide with something avoid hitting the reactor it takes the most time and money to fix and it also risks blowing up your ship if it keeps leaking when you're being attacked by pirates or anybody else that's attacking you just position your ship in ways that they can't take shots at your reactor because this is definitely the weak point and that could quickly end your run so just something to keep in mind as i said by far the most expensive to fix on the starting ship it takes a lot of time to fix and it can cause a lot of issues for you if you're out there and this gets damaged it is definitely going to happen at some point so don't worry about that you can fix it with jury rigging but if you're going to be in a battle you want to try and keep the front of your ship pointed at wherever they're firing from so i don't want to talk too much about the encounters that you can get in the game but do pay attention to subtle audio and visual cues i mean they're not even that subtle once you know what to look for basically when the music starts changing and say for example a blue tint appears on the edge of the screen it could be a sign that you are close to something of interest so do keep an eye out for that when you see a red tint, look out for signs of danger. This can often be a sign that you're about to be attacked by a pirate ship. So next up, I want to talk about jury rigging, repairs and repair time. So jury rigging is pretty straightforward. When you're out there flying, you can just press J and that'll give you the option of moving around some sliders to basically take systems that are damaged and at least do temporary fixes on them so that you can either continue to fly if the ship isn't too badly damaged or at least stabilize the ship enough so that you can plot a course back to the base and do proper fixes on it. Now when you do get back to the base and you want to do repairs you are going to have the option between fixing stuff and replacing them and especially in the early game there's just really never a good reason to completely replace stuff it is faster and that's probably the only reason to do it and of course it also gets you to a hundred percent fixes so basically it's the only way for you to get back to a hundred percent condition but you're just going to have to accept that at the beginning the ship is going to get damaged a lot and it doesn't make sense to replace it because it is so much more expensive so even though the repairs take a lot longer and even though they can't get you back to a hundred percent and even though they put you closer to the next salary payments for your crew usually the replacement costs are going to be so much higher that it's just not going to be worth it to do that so stick to the repairs at the beginning of the game later in the game it might make sense to do the replacements but also keep in mind that later in the game 
your mechanic probably also has a lot more experience at that point or maybe you've hired a more experienced mechanic so then you can usually do fixes that get the ship at least closer to 100 percent and you don't necessarily have to worry about doing jury rigging as you're setting out so as far as i've seen there aren't a lot of instances unless you really have a lot of money to spare where it makes sense to replace the ship or you know if you're at a point where you really don't get a lot of damage to the ship anymore now related to this point when you start out the game you're going to have some insurance against the ship and basically i think this is something that the developer implemented to make the game a little bit easier on new players so this is a separate account that you can't use to do upgrades and so on but you can use it to repair and replace parts but what i would say is don't waste this by replacing parts early on especially the reactor which is very expensive as i said rather just repair and jury rig as required you will crash initially a lot once you get used to the ship and you're regularly bringing in larger amounts of money then you can start considering doing the replacements and then finally once you're a little bit further into the game and you have a bit more money consider getting the military autopilot along with more powerful rcs this will make it much easier to avoid asteroid collisions by giving you an early warning of potential collisions and giving you additional maneuverability. So I've seen that this combination works really well. If you have a pretty powerful RCS and you have the military autopilot, it's going to show you exactly where the collisions are going to happen well in advance of those collisions. And you can quickly maneuver out of the way, which allows you to move at a really fast speed as you're moving through the uh, asteroid belts. Those are my beginner tips for Delta V. If you like this video and you'd like to see more of this content, please do like and subscribe and I'll see you for the next video.